the top three business metrics you should be measuring. Hello, Ooh, it's a breezy day here and it's May. How could it be May? How did that happen? Anyway, John here from Marketing for Owners, the podcast, you know me, member. Yes, of course you remember because you listen all the time, don't you? Please jump onto iTunes. Please make sure you subscribe because we have some good stuff here. And <clears throat> during the month of May, our theme is the question, the fifth question of the five questions, which is what? So these are the five questions every business owner sh- must be able to answer to have a truly successful business. And the fifth question is what? What did we do? Measuring, metrics, results. Did we make any money, for instance? So what are these three magic metrics, John? Well, they're not magic, and I've mentioned them before. Of all, one of the problems we have these days is the amount of information available to us and it gets thrown at us left, right and centre. And so of all of that, what do we measure? We've got good old Google Analytics and then if we've got e-commerce sites, we've got all the information from that. But amongst everything that you can be measuring, three things matter to you. Number one is profit margin. Okay, so it's not necessarily the profit, it is the profit margin. So the reason for that is um, when you start your business, you may not necessarily have enough sales to make a great profit. You may, uh, if you only do say 10,000 pounds of sales, because you're new over a period of time, the profit may be very small because of the fixed overheads. However, if you can generate 100,000 in sales, the profits may be large because the fixed overheads were paid for and the profit margin was adequate. But you need a margin. You need a solid margin. You cannot survive on 15% or 20% or 25%. It's extremely unlikely. And And my advice is that you don't compete with discounters because uh, only one can be cheapest and it's a slippery slope, it only goes down. I'm not gonna tell you how much profit you need to make, only you can decide that, but you will have to spend money to make money in a business. You will have to pay for some form of advertising or you will have to pay to have content created or you will have to have things done or you may have to pay a commission to partners etc etc introductory referral commissions all sorts you need a margin to be able to do that you may have to give an opening offer you need a margin to still be able to make a profit after that opening offer so that is the first thing I would suggest you concentrate on the second one is the cost of acquisition. Very simply, as I just stated, you will have to spend money in some form to get a customer. And if you've exhausted all of the ways of getting customers for free, you've asked your friends, your family, everyone you know, can they refer people, etc. When you've run out of those, who's next? So you will have to go out and you will have to pay to acquire a customer. It may be through Google AdWords, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, it may be through um, display advertising, banner advertising, it may be from inserts or anything. It may simply be your time. Remember, your time costs money. There is no such thing as free. So if you are writing the content, if you're doing everything, if you're walking down the streets putting leaflets through the doors that only cost a penny to have printed, That is your time. Don't give me a, I only do it in my spare time. It's your time, value yourself, please. That costs money. So you need to know what it costs to get a customer. And I'm just gonna give you an example because I have have noticed that people will mess, or will mix this up and will get a little confused. If you spend 100 pounds and you get one customer, that customer, right, this 100 pounds, uh, you've 
you've contacted, say you, you, I don't know, say you sent out a hundred of something, but only one person buys, right? So you paid a hundred pounds to send out a hundred leaflets or something, and you only got one customer. That customer did not cost one pound, that customer cost 100 pounds. Now, if you can increase the response or the um, res just increase the effectiveness of this acquisition strategy and double it and you get two customers, each customer only cost 50 pounds to acquire. If you can get four, they cost 25 pounds. So can you see that if you can reduce that cost of acquisition, if you can get more customers for the spend, or if you can reduce the amount, instead of spending 100, it only costs 50, etc., etc., you can reduce the cost of acquisition. But once you know what it costs to get a customer, and you know your profit margin, then you know what you can spend maybe you can spend 200 pounds instead of 100 and you can get two customers or eight or whatever it is you need to know what it costs the third metric is the customer lifetime value uh, there are many ways of calculating this but what i strongly recommend is you don't take that customer lifetime value too literally as in their lifetime um, so <coughs> let me explain for instance um, let me take uh, in we we do we sell fire extinguishers as one of the products in my fire safety business and we maintain them we service them we tend to service people once a year now in my experience because i ran a big um i built a big uh, fire extinguisher maintenance company myself years ago and sold it <coughs> generally when we looked after customers so when they became a customer they stayed a customer so we could we had customers who were there for 15, 20 years probably, I think, is it going that long? Um, but say 15 years, they are probably still using the people that bought <laughs> my company. It's, that's a lifetime, they're still going. You can't take it over that long. So you need to be sensible. Um, if a customer, say you had a subscription service and people pay you every month and they stay on average for nine months. Now that's the lifetime value that's what you need to know however quite often you need to in your calculations when you're factoring in um, what it's cost to acquire a customer and the profit margin and the customer lifetime value you may think well we can spend extra because over nine months they're going to be worth a certain amount however cash flow is cash flow if you spend far more than you're getting in you may not be able to survive to the end of there uh, to get the full lifetime value. So you may want to take, say, a three-month uh, look at it. So when people talk about customer lifetime value, you have to look at the cash flow. You may want to consider what you're going to earn over, say, just three months, and call that the life, uh, you know, that the customer value that you're going to measure. So consider those. But those three metrics if you keep an eye on those three metrics because you will need to have to acquire new clients at some point if you know those you are golden everything else will follow from that simple okay uh that was it monday it's book for the week time and today if you want to launch a business you can't do better than this the book is called launch and it is by michael stelsner Right, now just to get this understood, there are other books there. I believe uh, Jeff Walker's got a book called Launch. It is not his. This is the book called Launch by Michael Stelsner, who is the founder of uh, the massive, massive blog, Social Media Examiner. It, it effectively goes through an entire digital strategy, pretty much what they did to launch that with no money and built up a multi-million pound business, multi-million dollar business. So it's great. If you want to launch anything, if you are, if you just want to get online, build a business, follow what he does, simple as that. End of. Okay, I'll be back with you tomorrow.